Angela here at Arts and Glass. Today I'm going to be walking you through how to make this really cool mosaic design plate. I have my sample here that I did. Uh, this one is with a New York State design because we are New York strong. But I also have the design I'm going to make today is a peace sign. Uh, we have a couple different stickers that you can pick from. Um, these are just two examples of them. It uh, really lets you kind of personalize what you want to make with it. And yeah, then they come out, they look really, really cool. Uh, I'll go over my materials that I have. We have a couple different colors of paints. Uh, I have a tutu tango. It's a kind of cute pinky little peachy one. Cantaloupe, nice bright orange. Orange sorbet, another orange. Limoncello, nice yellow. And our sour apple green color. I also have a washable marker, some very thin painter's tape, uh, my magic sticker of course, my paint palette, some things that you might want to use from home. I have a bowl of water for rinsing out my brushes, a cloth towel that I can use to dry my brushes, and a couple little paint brushes as well. I have some scotch tape, just regular scotch tape will work, and a pair of scissors. All right, so I'll get started. First thing I need to do is get my magic sticker ready to stick on my plate. Um, to get my magic sticker off, because it's kind of uh, delicate, I'm gonna use that scotch tape as a transfer tape. So I'm gonna take a couple pieces and I'm just gonna lay it across parts of my design and the idea is when I peel that off from the backing, my design won't be flimsy and flippy floppy. I'll actually be able to put it down on um, my piece. So I'm going to tape it all over that. Get a couple more pieces. Go. When I put my scotch tape down, I am uh, layering them a little bit. So it's kind of creating one really large piece of scotch tape over it, if that makes sense. Uh, if you happen to have transfer tape at home for any reason, you can use that as well. Um, clear contact paper should do the same trick. But I like to use what I have and this is what I have. A couple more pieces on here. I'm not gonna forget the fingers at the top here and one more. There we go. Now when I peel off the backing of my stickers, I like to turn it over on the table and peel back my uh, backing to the sticker. And as you peel that back, it comes off nicely, I can throw that out. Now I wanna carefully decide where I wanna put the sticker down on my plate. I'm gonna try to center it on this one. I mean, you can put it wherever you want, really. Um, I like it centered. <laughs> so I'll kind of hold it over to where I get the position. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna put it down. Use my finger to kind of smooth down wherever the, the blue magic sticker is. And now I'm gonna very carefully peel off my scotch tape. That way just my sticker is down there. When I'm peeling off the tape, sometimes some of the magic sticker might try to come off with it. Um, that's okay, just push the magic sticker back down if that happens, which it has not yet. There we go. And it's a good idea to put the magic sticker down on your plate um, right when you're gonna paint it. You don't wanna leave like, magic stickers or masking tape on your plate um, for a really long time. The residue, or I should say the adhesive from the sticker can leave a residue on the plate if you leave it on there for too long. So it's one of those, we're jumping in, we're gonna put the tape on and then we'll take it off when we don't need it anymore. All right, after that, I'm just gonna go over those blue lines one more time to make sure 
Put our seal down there. There you can see, I got my sticker on there. Now, to get these kind of chunky mosaic pieces in the background of the plate, we used um, really thin painter's tape. This is about a quarter inch thick, so it's perfect for it. And I'm just gonna have some fun taping out some of the designs in the background. Um, you can get as wild as you want with it. If you want them to be perfectly straight lines, so you have kind of like almost like a plaid design, you can do that. I prefer to have kind of random lines, have some that go all the way across the plate. Some actually kind of go right through my center sticker. Uh, if you do that, you just want to try to make sure that after you put that tape down, we're going to cut off anything that actually covers um, our main design. So I'm just going to get started. This is one of those things that if you think too hard on it, it becomes difficult. But if you just kind of go with it, it's a lot easier. So I'm going to start here. And one thing I have noticed is when you're putting the tape down, it's best to have one hand hold the roll, the other hand grab the end of the tape and pull some off. And when you put it down, try to put the hand that's holding the end of the tape down first and then you know, dispense as much tape as you need. Otherwise, you might end up with not enough tape and you have to add more tape afterwards. So we'll just do that. So I put that side down, smooth out as I go. And when you're taping and you go right over the edge of the plate, that's okay to have some excess. You can have it go over the edge a little bit. It's better to have a little extra over the edge than to not make it all the way to the edge and then you, know, you have like paint bleeding into each other later on. I'm gonna start some of my lines off like this. So it starts right on the edge of my sticker. Kinda goes over like that. Ooh dear. You might wanna try not to knock your plate on the table when you do yours. So I kind of start with like these really big areas and then I can divide them up as I go later too. And you can make as many sections as you want. <laughs> um, it's just the more you have to paint it afterwards. You could use your scissors to cut the tape too, but regular masking tape is just gonna rip very nicely most of the time. Let's see. This is a nice project because it's really, it's easy for kids to do too. They can probably put their own tape on here. Um, I don't know, kids probably don't think about it as much as adults do, so they probably have an easier time with it. And if I have any pieces that kind of like end right at my magic sticker, I'll use the tape to cut those. Um, that way I don't have any little bits of the tape sticking out into um, any of the white spaces of my sticker. And see right here, I have like just a little bit of the tape corner sticking over. I'm just gonna use my nail to kind of like pick some of that back so it doesn't stick out. So if I have those little pieces sticking out when I'm painting, the masking tape is gonna block where the paint goes and you know, I don't want anything masked out that I don't want masked out. <laughs> it's almost like making a spider web, which is kind of cool. Yeah. 
And if you notice you start to have like some smaller areas, but you still have some big areas, then we'll just go back in and, and mask some more of those out. And I'm trying to get all different angles just to make it look funky because it is a very funky project. And if you don't like where you put a piece, you could pretty easily just take up the tape and redo it. There we go. So it's another piece that ends there. I'm just gonna... Actually, I'm gonna have it go right through up to the... to my sticker there. And I'll trim that. And let's see, where else needs a little tape? This section is kind of big here, so I'm going to try to bisect that. Cut that there. And almost done. This section is still kind of big too, so I'm going to break that up. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. It's, you know, have some fun with it. Make some cool designs. You could probably even like tape a maze going around it if you wanted to get wild. You know, it's your plate. All right, break that section up there. Lovely. <laughs> and I'll put a piece here. I should mention the more little shapes that you make, then the more, you know, color spots that you can do. Go. I'll get one more here. Nope, don't like that one. I'm gonna go with this way. Like I said, if you don't like it how it looks, you can just move it. There. And this piece down here is kind of big, so we'll break that up. more is more let's do it <laughs> there we go a couple more pieces in there all right last one over here let's see how many times I say last one before I actually decide this it's good <laughs> All right, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna show you how it looks all taped up. All right. So the next step is very reminiscent of a social studies project. I think I had once where you had a map and it was all divided up and you had to color the map, but you couldn't have any two of the same color pieces next to each other. So we're gonna go through and we're gonna decide which of our colors is gonna go through each of these sections. And my own rule is I try just like that map to have it so you don't have any, you know, two pieces right next to each other that are the same color. Um, is the plate going to explode in the kiln if that happens? No. Is the world gonna end? No. <laughs> is it still gonna look beautiful? Yes. Um, that's just my own game that I do with it. You know, even if you decided to just use like two colors or even just one color and do, you know, everything one solid color, you know, the fact that you have this masked out is gonna make it look really nice. Um, so if you wanna play the crazy game like I do and have the colors all spread out, uh, you'll have a washable marker. With the marker, you can draw on the pottery and it will 
the marker will burn off in the kiln. So it's a great way to kind of plan out, you know, where everything is going to go. Um, so I am going to have just one color that I save for my peace sign. And that one, I'm going to do the orange sorbet, a nice bright orange. So I'm going to kind of set that aside just so I don't forget. And my other colors, I'm going to use my green, my yellow, the orange, and the kind of peachy, pinky color um, for all these sections. Uh, I'm going to actually assign numbers to those four colors because instead of writing limoncello, limoncello, limoncello all over here and all the names, it's just easier to put numbers down. So I'll kind of go around. So I have orange sorbet. I'm just going to make that five and I'm going to write in five for these sections just so I don't forget. <laughs> all right, that's five. And I'm going to put that gonna write right on my palette so I know that's where that color is gonna go. All right, so number one, limoncello. One, two, three. And as I'm putting my numbers down, if I decide, oh wait, no, I don't want that section to be uh, number two, I can just, um, you know, put a line through it and write another number down because again, it's all gonna burn off in the kiln. So here we go, I have two in this section here. So when I do this section that kind of goes all around the fingers, I'm gonna try to use a different color than two. And I'm probably gonna try to use a different color than four because that border's here. So I'll make this one three. And I'm just gonna write three on here just so I don't forget. And then since this is two and this is three, I'll probably want this one to be four. Kind of like a math puzzle. <laughs> Three, one, two. Now I'll get back over here. And I try to balance the numbers as I go through. Um, after I, for my sample, wrote out all the numbers for it, I counted it up and whichever ones I had the most sections of, I made that whatever like the most different color was. So I had the most of like blue. So I made that one blue and then the rest, I did the, the yellow and the gold, just so it's a little balanced. Again, it's one of those things, your piece isn't gonna blow up in the kiln. That's just me trying to balance out color. Two over here, put three. Here, one. I'll write two down here again so I don't forget. And two, two, one. Wherever you have a bunch of colors or sections that kind of meet, um, it might be helpful to work out those colors first before just randomly assigning <laughs> numbers. So I feel like that's pretty well balanced. Um, I got my numbers. I'm gonna write the rest of my numbers on my palette too and assign the colors. So we decided one was gonna be limoncello. Two will make this nice green. Three will be my other orange. And four will be my tutu tango. So I'll put my marker away because I'm done with that for now. And now I can pour my paints. yellow. That's a good thing I wrote the numbers down. Okay, two. <laughs> oh, spilled my paint again. This usually happens. It's all washable. It's okay. Apparently I'm starting a paint spilling club, so you can join that with me. <laughs> Got my number three, cantaloupe. And last but not least, my tutu tango. All right. So when you're using these paints, 
One coat of coverage is gonna give you more of a watercolor look where you'll see the brush strokes and everything. Um, but if you let that dry and then you give it you know, two or three coats, it will look a lot more solid. So when I did my sample here, I did three kind of swishy coats. Um, if you, and you can see like a little bit of the brush strokes, um, but I think it actually kind of lends itself to looking almost like a stained glass look, you know? So you can kind of see it's a little bit of like their brushes, but you know, it looks kind of nice. I think if anything, I wish I might've gotten like one more coat on my center part here. So when I do my sample tonight, I'm gonna make sure I do four coats in that center here. And the rest, I think I'll just stick with like, you know, two or three. Okay. I get my brush. And one more time, I'm just gonna check to make sure all of the tape is down. And I can go ahead and get painting. So I like to do one color at a time and I'm gonna fill in one coat of all of those sections at once. That way I can keep track of uh, how many coats I've done at a time. There we go. And a good rule of thumb when you're using painter's tape, which you might know if you've painted houses or rooms, um, I try not to sweep the paint onto the tape. I instead try to start on the tape and like brush it into the area. Um, because as good as the painter's tape is, you don't want to rely on it for everything you're trying to get um, your lines nice and clean. So I try not to sweep it, you know, into the tape if I can help that. In the end, if you have any bleeding under the tape, and sometimes that just happens, um, you'll be able to go back and kind of use like a toothpick or so to like clean it up a little bit. So don't worry about it. It's just one of those projects that, you know, trying to have a fun time with. <laughs> now you'll notice I did not go through and count, you know, how many sections I had of one, how many I had of two, three, and four. Uh, I'm just kind of going for it. You know, there's no like wrong way to do it as long as you like it. And in this project, I actually used one more color than I did on my New York sample. Um, I, for my New York sample, I was trying to stick with the New York colors. <laughs> so I had the gold and the navy and um, you know two shades of each. And I was a little nervous adding too many other colors and so that's why I did that. I think <laughs> had I had you know one more color for my background, it might've been a little easier deciding what colors go where, but you know, that's, it is what it is, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. <laughs> and I gotta admit, I feel like a little bit of a poser making it a New York plate, because I'm actually not from New York. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey, and I moved to New York, oh, a couple years ago. Actually, probably like seven years ago at this point, actually, um, to be with my then boyfriend, now husband. So I guess the next plate I make, I'll make a New Jersey one. All right, so I got all of my number ones, my yellows painted in. I'm just gonna gently swish my brush in the water to dry it out. And you can use paper towel or a cloth towel. Just, you know, gently dab and swirl the brush on that towel so it's dry before you put it into the next paint color. And I'm gonna use my lime green that I spilled. <laughs> I might actually take some of the paint from where I spilled too because waste not, want not. <laughs> and you'll notice as you paint on any pottery pieces with these under glazes that the paint on the first coat dries very, very quickly. Uh, your pottery is like a sponge and as you paint it, it's gonna soak up that water really quickly on the first coat. Um, so as you kind of look at what I'm painting, you're gonna notice that you know my yellows are already looking pretty dry. Um, so they'll be ready for the second coat pretty soon. There we go. 
The second and the third coat take a little longer to dry just because you know it's already soaked up some of that water. Um, it is important when you're painting, you don't want to leave blobs of paint on there. You want to kind of spread those out as much as you can, just so the paint goes on nice and evenly. There. If you have too much paint on it, if you have like a blob, or if you decide to just put coats and coats and coats of paint on there, um, it can do what's called crawling in the kiln, where there's so much paint on there, it actually kind of beads up together and pulls away from the pottery. And that's a bummer. So definitely spread out your paints. Um, and you can always, you know, just don't have blobs. <laughs> if you're painting the edge of the plate, if you notice you have like drips coming out the, on the side, um, you just wanna go back and wipe those so you don't have them hanging out there forever. Get some more green. This time I did not spill it. Well, it's close. I better use it fast before I spill it. <laughs> Here are my twos, here we go. Now this technique doesn't just apply to pottery, um, especially if you have like, young artists and you have like a canvas or some like poster board laying around and you're looking for a fun activity, give them a roll of masking tape and let them tape out a design and paint in those big areas because even if they, you know, paint over everything and kind of, you know, mix colors from here and here, when you take that tape off, um, you're gonna have still a really cool design. If you wanna get crazy, you can use the tape to tape out like letters or numbers. You could tape out like their name in it. It's just fun. Keeps them occupied and makes a actually pretty cool picture. And I'm not saying that adults can't do that because it sounds really fun too. <laughs> Any other twos? Oh, here's one more two. There we go. So I'm going over the edge a little bit, make sure I don't have any paint beading over the edge. All right, got my first coat of the green done. Switch the brush, dry it. On to my threes, which is my cantaloupe color. So for the colors for this project, I definitely went with some like citrus colors. <laughs> Maybe I just have food on the brain, but you know, it's also kind of nice and summery colors right now. Here's another One more section of that to paint in. And let's finish that off. A little corner to get, ooh, almost went into there. Okay. Got all threes, perfect. We'll clean that brush. Draw that brush. You'll notice I have a bunch of brushes also here to use, um, just in case anything happens to my brushes. I have some extra ones. <laughs> Sometimes when I get painting and I don't wanna rinse the brushes, I get lazy. I just have a bunch of different brushes and I have one for each color. So, but I figured I will wash them for this. <laughs> but in case this one explodes, I have some backups. <laughs> so I'm going in now and I'm painting these other sections with my Tutu Tango color, which is just such a cute name. <laughs> I 
go. I think this color really kind of pops, especially with, you know, the slightly lighter colors. Oh, I found a section here that I did not assign a number to. <laughs> so let's see, I think we'll make that one the green just because I don't see green around it. He thought he could escape. Actually, this is where those extra brushes will come in handy. Just get a little bit of green in there before I forget. That's it for now. Go back and get the rest of my fours. to tango. This is a really good project to do if you want to paint with friends too, because it's one of those, you know, you just kind of like go along painting and you can be chatting and stuff and, you know, it's not one of those things that you have to like be focusing on all the time. Um, it's good if you're you know, watching TV, you can paint it too. There we go. All right, got all those sections done. I'm gonna go ahead and paint some of my peace sign parts too. So I grab my orange sorbet color, my number five color, if you will. And I'll get that first coat in as well. Oh, that's gonna look so cool. And you can do this project on other pieces of pottery too. Um, I like the plates for projects because it's a nice flat canvas, um, but this would translate really nicely onto like mugs, vases. Um, bowl would work as long as you have like a flat enough area to put your main sticker. Um, and if you were really creative, you could do this on, you know, like a, a figurine or like a big bank or something too. Okay. So we'll start our, our series of mosaic design projects. So now that I have my first coat done of all the colors, I'll show you how that looks. Hey, right, looking pretty good so far. And I am definitely ready to go ahead and start putting my next coat of paint on. I'm gonna rinse this brush that I used for green, just so the paint doesn't dry on there. Um, like I was saying earlier, the paint is all washable. Um, as you can see, I did not put anything down on my table before I started painting. Um, it's very easy to clean up. If you're worried about where you're painting, you can even just throw down some newspapers and then just recycle them afterwards. Um, but it washes out of clothes, washes out of hair, off you, you know. They are non-toxic paints and they become permanent when they get fired in our kiln. Um, so after you finish painting your project, let it dry overnight at least, and then you can bring it back to the studio. We will coat your project in a clear coat called glaze. And what that does is just seal all the areas of your piece, including anything that you didn't get painted. 
So at the end of this, when we take up this tape, you know, all these white areas in here, um, we're not gonna paint those. So the glaze will protect that as well as cover, you know, any of the colored places too. And when it gets fired in our kiln, it heats up to about 1600 degrees. And that glaze turns uh, clear, shiny, makes your pieces food safe, uh, the color permanent, and that nice glossy finish to it. <clears throat> the kiln itself runs for about seven hours, but it's about 26 to 28 hours from the time we load it to the time we can unload it. So it, it takes a little while. <laughs> but it's worth the wait because these come out, you know, as you can see from the example, beautiful. All right, where are my other yellow spots here? As I go around for doing, you know, the next coat of each color, I try to always start in like a similar area and work my way around the plate, just so I, I make sure I get everything and don't miss it. Um, the first coat, like I was saying, dries pretty quickly. The second and third coats uh, take a little longer, so it might be a little harder to tell where I left off um, for doing the coats if I'm not, you know, actively tracking it. So I got all the yellow second coat done. Now I'm gonna do my green second coat. Not gonna spill the green this time. Put that in there. Now when I did my sample, and as I'm doing this one, you know, I'm just doing solid colors in each of these little cells for my design, um, but you can get really creative with it. You know, after you paint the background colors, you could even do, you know, patterns in each of these, like in all the yellow sections, do patterns with, you know, uh, orange, green, and like the peachy pink color, you know, stuff like that. Um, so you can, you can really get crazy with it. <laughs> If you're trying to do this as a project together as a family, um, you know, you could have everyone have their own color, you know, each person paints in their, their color cells, and then they can paint their own like little mini picture in each of the cells too. Um, yeah, and then you have a, a piece that everyone got to make their mark on and work on together, which is really sweet. If you make the plate, you can make a coordinating set. Um, or you have like a bowl and a mug, or you can have everyone in the family make their own one their own way. The possibilities are endless, really. <laughs> well, not gonna forget this little one this time. Here. And this one. Oh, still gonna need more green paint. Try to get some that I spilled. <laughs> green second coat. Moving on to my second coat of that cantaloupe color, that kind of light orange. There we go. That color just looks so nice, even, even wet. Um, and you'll notice as these colors are drying on here, they look different on the plate than they do on my tiles. So the colors dry looking very light and chalky. 
Um, and then they'll mature in the kiln into these, you know, these nice, bold, vibrant colors. So as you notice it drying and looking really pale, um, it's not defective, it's just supposed to be like that. <laughs> As I'm painting, you know, I'm going over the, the edges of the tape a little bit. Um, <laughs> when you do that, just keep track of where the tape is because now I'm like, I'm seeing the, the two colors of the paint line up and I'm like, all right, try not to go over into the next cell of color. <laughs> this color. It'll be close. <laughs> Alright, and on to my number five color, the darker orange for my hand. I'll have to remember, I plan to do the four coats on my hand colors. That way that center one is really nice and bold and kind of stands out. When you're doing this, you know, I picked my colors so that I had a separate color for my picture in the center. Um, you don't have to do that. You can use, you know, just a couple colors and pick one of them for your center piece and just try not to have you know, that same color connect to any of the cells around it. Um, I personally like to have it its own color because then I feel it really like stands out against the background. All right, coats on all of that. All right, I'm gonna do one more coat on all the background. It does get easier to put the second and the third coat on again because you know that's not the paint isn't just you know, soaking right into the pottery the bisque so it does go faster with the subsequent coats some more yellow Just make sure you get all the way to the edges of each of those cells when you're painting them. And that'll help give you those nice crisp lines when we take the tape off. Which I have to admit is like a super, super satisfying part of this project. You're gonna love it. <laughs> And whenever I get to the edges, I'm trying not to put a lot of paint there um, because in the end, I'm actually gonna use a little bit of sandpaper just to sand the edges smooth. And that's gonna help when my piece comes out of the kiln, I'll have those really nice um, edges that are, that are perfectly white to kind of go with the white framing of my piece. Yeah. Did I get all the yellow? Yeah, I did, look at that, okay. 
So as I'm looking at my handprint, it, it, or my hand sticker, um, it's pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my third coat of the orange on right now. That way, by the time I get through my other three colors, I can get one more coat of paint on there. So I am cheating and going out of order. Now, as long as I remember that I did that, it will be okay. <laughs> Uh, when in doubt, if you get like a fourth or a fifth max coat on here, you're still going to be okay. I wouldn't paint until you run out of paint. <laughs> you might have a few too many coats on there. Um, but you know, that, that one extra coat is, isn't really going to hurt. As I'm looking at this, I feel like, oh, should I like paint the nails of the hand? And then <laughs> next project, we'll do that. <laughs> All right. So that's the third coat of the handprint done. I did my yellow, now I'm on to my last coat of the green. Let's see if I can pour this one last time without spilling it. Okay. See, he's gonna have fun with the project. You gotta have fun with everything, if you can. Makes life a lot more fun. Here. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Two sections. Another cool idea with this is after you have the paint all down, before it gets too dry, you know, you could take like a toothpick or a bamboo skewer and kind of like scratch into the paint, almost like doing scratch art. Um, and it'll scratch down to just about to the bare bisque. So you're kind of scratching in, you know, white lines into it. Um, so that's another way if you don't want to have, you know, solid colors here, um, but don't want to add too much color to it. You know, you can kind of etch out some little like squiggly lines or something in each of those sections. Um, it'll still look really cool. If you do decide to do that, you'll notice you'll get some paint crumbs sticking up. Don't brush them off until everything is completely dry. I'll just leave you with that tip. <laughs> Not gonna forget that little section. Fooled me once. And as you're painting this, if you get interrupted and you gotta go do something, um, I would just write down like where you left off just so you don't forget how many coats you have on there. Um, you know, you don't wanna leave it sit for too long because like we were saying before, you know, the longer you leave the masking tape on, the harder it is to take it off, sometimes you have a little residue. But. All right, green done. Get my last coat of my cantaloupe on here. And I'm doing the three coats on it. You don't have to do three coats. Um, you know, two coats will still look cool. One coat will look cool. It'll just look, you know, we see a little more of like the brush texture in it, so. It's nice when you're like looking at your project and you're like, yeah, yeah, I like this. <laughs> That's a good feeling. I assume it's the same feeling that like if you make a meal and that you're not like familiar with making and then you try it and you're like, oh yeah, this is really good. <laughs> I wouldn't know that feeling because I should not be left unattended in a kitchen, but I imagine that's what it's like. <laughs> I'm 
just got these two last sections of my cantaloupe and I'm out of paint. I gotta pour just a little more. Oh, I got a clump in there. If you ever have some dried paint or you know, a little clump or something in your paint, just kind of fish it out and put it off to the side. <laughs> in our cap, sometimes the dried paint gets stuck in there and a little bit just came out. Um, you do not want to include that in your project if you can help it. All right, last section of cantaloupe. All right, wash my brush. Gonna get the last tutu tango in there. Oh, that looks good. As you're painting, you might see, like I just saw in this section here, a little bit of the marker was showing through um, the paint. That's okay. Don't worry about that at all. It's just the, you know, the pigment from the marker. Um, you won't see it. Even if you still see it through the paint now, it'll burn right out when it hits the kiln. Or I should say when it goes into the kiln, it's not literally going to hit the kiln. unless something really bad is happening in the kiln room. But we don't usually have like tornadoes go through the kiln room, so you don't have to worry about that. Two more sections. It's like I can feel I'm getting closer to the point where I get to peel off the tape. And I get very excited for that. And you'll see what I mean when you get to do it. All right. If you did happen, you know, let's say I was painting and I, I got a little bit of this color into one of the other sections, while it's still wet, you could just wipe it. You know, you could wet your towel and like wipe it or use your finger, um, you know, wipe what you don't want out of there and then just go back in with the other color and give it a couple coats just to make sure you cover it up. Um, you know, it's, it's washable right now. So you can clean up mistakes like that. It's way better to take off the paint that you don't want than to just try to cover it up. So don't be afraid of that. You know, and as you're painting, if you ever have questions about how to do something or like, Oh, it doesn't look like it's like going well or something. Um, just give us a call <laughs> or you can send us a Facebook message or email, anything. And we can, you know, troubleshoot as best we can. All right, now I'm getting my fourth coat on my hand here. Zoop. And I know it's ready for that fourth coat because the sheen of it has gone away. There's nothing like shiny of that paint. There we go. At least on the pottery. You might have like some sheen on top of the tape because it's not gonna dry as quickly there, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> All right. There we go. Okay. Wash my brush. I'm gonna clear out the area here so I have plenty of room. Oh yeah, green paint, I spilled you. I'll wipe it up now. See, like I said, super washable. <laughs> here we go. All right, so for this part, um, you want to wait until some of the sheen of the paint has gone away um, because when we pull up the tape, um, you're going to have some little crumbs of dried paint that kind of flake off as the paint is or the tape is like curling up. Um, and I just don't want them to stick to anything that's still 
wet. <laughs> so I just want to be like very careful with that. So if you need to, you know, just give it like a minute or so um, before you, you know, jump right into it. But essentially, we're going to be carefully peeling off our tape um, and then have some place to put all that so it's out of your way. Right? So it's just about good. I'll let you take a look. You can see it. Cool. And the nice thing about when we taped it earlier and we had some of those tape pieces hanging over like the edge is now I can use those to go back and peel up my tape. Oh, cool. So you're going to notice as you're pulling off the tape, you're going to get these really, really, really nice um, straight lines. Here, so you can kind of see as I do it. And if you get to the point where, you know, your web of tape is kind of splitting up, just be careful with when you peel it off. If you need to, use your scissors to cut some of the long ones as you're peeling it. Let's see, pull this one up next. And all that work of putting the tape down is paying dividends now. Because look at these beautifully crisp edges we have. Now, I'm not going to worry about peeling off my blue sticker just yet. I'm just going to focus on taking the tape off first. <laughs> now, I love peeling off this tape. Um, it is my favorite part. <laughs> Whenever we do kids' classes, and, you know, we use these magic stickers a lot um, in our kids' classes just because it's a really... Um, fun process with a quality product at the end of it. Um, it's so much fun to watch their faces when you peel off the tape and, and watch my face too because I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> All right, I got a couple more pieces here to pull off. I'm going to tilt that forward to get that. Now, again, if I have some crumbs and they're kind of sitting on top of a section, uh, I'm going to try to resist the urge to brush them off just yet. Because I'm going to wait till this project completely, completely dries before I brush those. Um, so just like I was saying before, you want to let it sit overnight before bringing it back to us. That way the paint really has a chance to fully, fully dry. And then any of these crumbs we can kind of... Um, peel off later. Okay. Or you can give it a blow too. <laughs> so there's what it's looking like so far. And for the last part, we need to peel off this blue magic sticker. So I'm going to try to get my nail under part of the sticker where there's white. I'm not going to try to peel it from a side where there's paint because I don't want my nail to actually dig in and you know, gouge that paint there. Right here. If you don't have really sharp nails, you can use a pin or safety pin to kind of like start it going too. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Let's see. There's my peace sign plate. <laughs> so in the end, before I fire this, and if you want us to do this too, just let us know when you drop it off. I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper after it fully dries and just go around the edges. That way I have uh, those nice, like perfectly white edges that match my lines in the end too. Then I'll glaze it, fire it, and folks will get to see it when it's all done. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us. I hope you had a fun time painting and stay tuned for the next project that we come up with. Bye.